So we've got this little fella out here, sovereign, and George on the inside. So George is a schoolmaster pony, you know, it's, we use it for ponies like this today because today we're taking this horse, he's just had its teeth done. Had one wolf tooth removed, a, and a, certainly had very sharp teeth running up on the outside, you know, with slight ulcerations on the gum. So obviously we give him a day off, and the vet said, give him, you know, 10 days to two weeks off according. You know, don't, obviously common sense tells you he's gonna be better off without a bit in his mouth for that period of time. So what we're driving him is off of his head collar. So although he's wearing, if you pull him over there, you can see he's got no bit in at all. And we're driving him off his head collar because we don't want to lose time with training. But what we're going to do in a minute, we'll keep stopping and see if his mouth is affected because you have to realise if you've been to the dentist, you know, um, and had a tooth out, like he's had a wolf tooth removed, which uh, was quite a big one, um, which we can show you a clip of it, you know, the size of the tooth and it coming out and where it was positioned in his head. Um, you know, in his jaw. So we don't want to stop the training, but what we're going to do now, we're going to go just about a mile and we're going to see what he does when we stop. Now, if he rubs his mouth or his face on that, that's why we put a spreader bar with a padding on it. Can you see at the front there, instead of having pole straps or chains, we've got a spreader bar. So, we don't want him obviously to pick a chain up in his mouth that's just sponge and leather wrapped around it same as the pole so it can't hurt his little mouth because um, he might well play with it you see but I mean in playing with it it could be the, the situation could be that um, he you know he'd hurt his little mouth so what we're going to do is come down to the school here and stop and just sit here and watch his reaction to that. Now I expect him, he always had rubbed his head, um, you know, messed about. He's just one of them ponies, he finds it hard to concentrate. So he messes about quite a bit. You know, he play with a chain, he play with a, you know, with a pole chain, he play with a pole, he play with the horse next door's ears if he could. He pull their mane, he do all sorts, you know. But if he'll stand here reasonably quiet now, it's a very good indication Oh, baby boys, my little sugar plum. So there you are, you see, there's a vast difference. We'll show you a, a, a little clip of film when he's um, had a bit in his mouth and like that. But this is perfectly acceptable. It's very good. No problems with that. There were a few midges about, although it's this time of year, there's a little few about. But he's not doing anything. He's dropping his head, but he's not attempting to rub his mouth or his jaw up by his eye or anywhere at all. He's just standing there. And for him, this is exceptionally well, <laughs> exceptionally good behaviour, because he is a little terror. But you can see there, you see he's got nothing in his mouth at all. And he's just, so you know, that's the sort of thing he does, now, you see. So he'd play with her, he'd play with that rain, he'd do anything, he'd pour the ground. That's just him, it's just the way he is. It will change, but... Do I see that, look? He's barely doing it, pouring the ground. He's not pouring the ground with any gusto, is he? He's just doing it. Um, that's what I do, so I'll do that now. But all that will leave him in time. What you cannot do with a horse, this is getting off the subject of what we're talking about. What we, uh, what you can't do with, or we, what we don't do with horses, you cannot close them down entirely. They're like a pressure cooker. You've got to have somewhere to let the gas off, you know, or the pressure off. So I wouldn't tell him off for scraping now because I know by the time he's finished training, he won't be doing it. You know, that's just experience, I suppose. That little swish of the tail is, come on, let's get on with it while we stood here. You see George there, stand there as quiet as a lamb, you know, picking up information with her ears. But other than that, just being aware of what's going on around her. Like there's a car coming up a road that we're coming to that we're probably going to turn... Um, I might go straight on, but there's one off to the 
to the left hand side she's just picked a motor car up or a noise there she can probably hear the postman talking to that lady far better than we can because her ears are so much better her hearing so much better so she can probably pick up a bit of that conversation and like that but so so you see now the difference in behavior just by having these teeth done now if we put a bit in there now we even with our soft rubber bits if that's coming up and comes back where the wolf tooth was situated and it touches it's going to be sore so you imagine when you come out of the of the dentist two days later you you can only read all to us i can't talk to them can you i do try to you know i mean i try to communicate through their body language and try and understand what they want but it's taken me a lifetime to get this far and i need another lifetime to get it right but but you wouldn't go jogging a day or the same day as you had a tooth out because it would ache wouldn't it make it throb wouldn't it it'd be painful where you've had your jaw and everything pulled around pack up now pack up um but in general pretty good so i know now if he had like if his jaw hurt or you know his mouth hurting anyway he'd be rubbing it you know he'd rub it to uh you know to try and ease it so we can see he hasn't got any discomfort to any great degree so i'm happy with that you know and he's standing there reasonably quiet for him please believe me this is quiet We'll put a couple of clips up on this bit of film and you can <laughs> see he's proper crackers, you know what I mean? He's like, he wants to do everything at once. He's like a, a kitty with, with uh, three or four toys. You're better off giving him one at a time. So if he had a colouring book, he'd never finish a picture. He'd be on to the next page doing the next one. Never finish a picture. Uh, and then if he had uh, two toys, he'd be playing with that. And then he'd be, you know, then if he had three, he'd be playing with that. And then he'd go back to the book and then he'd stay. And the more toys you give him, that's just the way he is. And that's what I'm saying, they're all individuals. But here's an interesting thing. He's just put his leg at rest at the back. I hope you can get that on camera. He's sitting looking back at me, look. Hello, Dad, why can't we go? I've already poured the ground several times and you haven't listened to me. We're supposed to be moving forward now. I don't want to stand here. Well, when he first come, oh, he was hard work. <laughs> he didn't pay any attention, proper little sugar plum. He didn't pay any attention at all to anything right other than what he was wanting to look at or do or what's it say go down the road and he'd look left he'd look right so he'd, he'd say you had him in a pair or a team or whatever you had him in um he put his head over the horse's neck to have a look you know to the left you know wouldn't think <laughs> he could get his reins caught up in all sorts he'd get into more trouble than gunpowder but now he's coming and he's standing and he's, he's gonna make a nice little pony but obviously when they have their teeth done it holds up progress that's why we always say please get a, a vet i always have a vet i don't have a dentist i'm not knocking dentists but i do think that if you've got a vet for me for me if you've got a vet come they've got a lot of experience or well, certainly our vet has you know of doing them over the years um he's got all the equipment Obviously, I'm not saying dentists don't have all the equipment, but he has all the equipment. But I do believe that in some cases, the um, there isn't, a, you know, you, there's sort of different periods of time you can train for and then call yourself a dentist. And I don't know whether it goes up in different levels. So, but you see him standing there now and he's, he's very good. You know, we're, we're happy with him just standing there quiet. It's, the difference is quite unbelievable, really. Um, from before so that's why we wouldn't put a bit in now so we probably won't put a bit in we'll try him in for another four days so that'd be six days seven days time um, and if he's not comfortable then we'll do exactly the same thing we'll come down this far or maybe just half the distance stop see how he is if he's rubbing he's like that he's saying please take this out my mouth he can't say it any plainer can he this is uncomfortable so we leave him another little time and then what we'll do the next time before we take him out we'll put it on in the stable just off his head collar and let him just wear it for a little while and see if he plays with it and carries on and normally what i find if they attempt to eat short feed by that i mean grain chaff yeah they attempt to eat that with a bit there's no point in giving them hay because it just wraps around a bit metal or rubber and you know 
you've got a great big ball in their mouth well that don't help them does it obviously but if, if you attempt to eat a bit of short grub with that in you know then you can go okay that's good right we're going to walk on now walk on walk good boy straight up into the colosseum 